The next project that we're going to be putting together is this little signal generator. This is a, a little signal generator. So far we've got the parts, we've got the printed circuit board and we've got the little battery container here. And we'll open up this and we'll just have a look at all the parts laid out and also the um, circuit diagram it came with. So what we've done here is just laid out the parts that we, um, we've got in the little packet that we saw earlier. And what we've also done is just gone through the parts list. You can see here you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven areas which is just describing um, the parts and how many parts there, um, there were and also what their values were so we just checked all that off and made sure that we had all all that that um, we require for the kit you can see we've got a little circuit diagram it's not an over complex circuit the main part of the circuit is the IC which is a triple five timer but basically what what we've got coming out um, right depending on what point it comes out from is that you end up with um, a square wave um, you've got an integrator um, a sawtooth and a sine wave and you have a, um, a variable resistor here which gives you a bit of control with amplitude and how that will work is just by putting jumpers across which will give us the output out of the transistor here uh, which will come out for the output here now this is fixed frequency it's only just running on one kilohertz it's basically used for audio applications where you just want a one kilohertz sine wave which is easily heard and um, you know and feed that into an amplifier etc all right we'll go through and clean the board um, we'll then go through and check all the right components for um, the values and just make sure that they are intolerant and they are working and once we've got that done um, we'll start assembling the board now they don't actually give you values of the components, they just give you the number of the components. So you really have to reference back to write the sheet that they provide you. For an example, you know, um, resistors 1 to 3 is 1K. You can see here um, resistors 4 to 6 are 10K. So you, you have to look at the number and reference that back to the sheet depending on whether you're putting resistors on or capacitors. Um, etc. So now we've checked all the values of these and we checked them against the sheet provided to make sure that the right resistors are in the right placings on the board and they all check out okay so our next step now is to um, solder those in so we put the resistors on first as you can see and then we'll move on from there. We've got our um, right capacitors put in, we've got the right ceramic discs which are these ones and I think that's a tantalum if I remember correctly and and we also put in the IC bed, um, just making sure that you've got that orientated the right way. And there's only one diode for this circuit. Just make sure you've got it orientated the right way. You know, if you're building one of these, write your cathodes up this end. Right, keeping in mind that your right potentiometer is located down here, so we're using that as a reference and looking that way. Um, what we'll do now is uh, start moving on to the, the transistors and the pot. We've got all, all, all the components in. Um, we've got the triple five timer in, the pot, electrolytic caps, the transistors, um, the ceramics and the resistors as I pointed out before. We've got our two pins in for our ground and out so we can solder onto those leads later on. And we've also got the right the battery now. Notice that the battery comes in from right the component side of the board and then it'll attach onto the other side. That particular hole there is nothing that actually goes in there that's kind of sitting underneath the potentiometer and you can see your uh, positive and negative lead attachments here from the right soldering side of the board and what will happen now is that the right, the battery holder will go over there like that and it just screws in. Uh, we just um, secured on the right the 9 volt battery holder um, to the actual right printed circuit board itself. You can see here there's three uh, self self tapping screws that go through and they come in from the uh, component side and on the other side um, you see here that they're just showing through on the right, the underneath side of the board uh, where the battery sits in here um, but they're yeah but they're below the surface so they're not actually poking up they won't cause any problems with the battery itself so as you can see the output is here um, we've got our ground connection on and the probe the probe is on times one so as you can see here we've got the jumpers um, there's four positions as you can see at the moment we've got it set on sine wave 
the next one under that is um, sawtooth or triangular I should say and the next one under that is the integrated waveform and the bottom one here is the square wave and we'll have a look at each one of those and that's your adjustment there for your amplitude so the amplitude adjustment is worth a little pot here um, as you can see we can wind it right down and you can basically wind it right down to off or almost off and then start it back up again so it gives you a fairly good range we're on 200 millivolts per right division so it's pushing out um, a reasonable size signal and you can take that down to zero I'll just swap over from the sine wave so I'm just going to take the little jumper off uh, just take that off move it down to the next position put that on and you can see there you get a um, triangular or sawtooth waveform right the next one under that is the the integrated waveform um, I'll put that on you can see that that's a, a fairly hefty signal that probably shows it better there and the next one under that is your square wave and there's your square wave there so So it's not too bad a square wave you know, for a simple circuit and it's only working off um, right, a triple five timer and it's providing those four waveforms. All in all I thought the, right, the quality of the kit was quite good. One thing we did find is that the, the solder holes were you know, like a little bit large compared to the leads but it didn't cause too much of a drama. You can see here that the battery is on the bottom and I haven't got to push right in um, I'm not keeping it on there as a, you know, as a permanent thing but with the battery um, you can either mount it this way and that's the way it's supposed to be mounted um, what I'd probably be more inclined to do is mount that on top of a, you know, a small utility box and, you know, and just have a, um, a 9 volt right socket that, we, that you put on the box and you just plug into a power supply something like that if you wanted to but if you're working on the bench primarily um, I think a 9 volt power supply and a socket would be a better option